How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I've got number 5 of my uh, top favourite trucks and it is, yeah, the Navistar. I do like this beast. I bought it, um, I think it was about a day or two after I originally got the game. Again, just for anyone who's not sure, uh, yeah, I basically bought this off the PlayStation Store. You did get it free um, if you pre-ordered the game. I pre-ordered the game but I pre-ordered it off Amazon and maybe just they weren't doing some offer with like you get the free code. I'm honestly not bothered. Um, I bought it. It was £1.69. I believe it was worth it. If you're thinking about it, do your own research or whatever. Um, don't sort of buy it just based on my opinion. But I definitely enjoy the truck. I think it's uh, worth the money. Unlike that Khan Marshall thing that's for some reason like twice the price. But is just a maniac. Um, yeah, and I've, I've always liked this thing. When I originally started the game, I basically had the choice, I suppose, of upgrading uh, the GMC, the Fleet Star, or this. That's what I had like right at the beginning. I suppose I found the Kodiak relatively quickly after that. And, yeah, I decided to put all my money in this. And in the end, I'm glad I did. And that's what someone was saying, really, with the Kodiak, I believe it was, that a lot of the upgrades are a bit too far in the game. Um to where it's just worth putting money in other stuff that's upgradable quicker. As for this, I remember the main thing being as I was climbing through the game was money slash uh, what level I was. Like I was more waiting for the level to unlock to get like the next upgrade I wanted. I wasn't really... Uh, I, well, I suppose because it's the Navistar there wasn't really a lot of upgrades to like be found around the map. I'm sure like the high range gearbox probably was but I did use the low range quite often uh, when I first started the game anyway, but as I upgraded this truck, one thing I will say about it is when you first buy it, it's like it's fine, but some people said this was OP. I personally don't believe it was. I, it's definitely better than like the GMC and the Fleet Star, particularly when you put money into it, but back at the start of the game, it did cost a lot of money. Like the engine alone on this thing, I believe was like 24 grand or something. Which is a hell of a lot for when you've got a first truck like the GMC. Um, it's probably, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's probably around 24 grand to buy the entire truck. It's probably not even 24 grand to add most of the like upgrades on it, and engine and gearbox and everything. So this thing wasn't cheap and I did have to kind of make that choice. Do I plow my money into this or do I, uh, yeah, do a few other things up. But I'm glad I did and one thing I do like about this truck... It's, to be honest, I, well, one, I do like the look of it, and to me, it strikes me as more of, like, a traditional highway American truck, whereas stuff, I know they're Russian, not American, but stuff like the Tega and so on look more like they were purpose-made for off-roading. This thing looks more like a highway version of a truck, but then Navistar, the company, I believe, like, they make these for the army, so... They've basically been, yeah, taken as a highway truck and then beefed up for, like, military spec, military use and stuff. And I just quite like the way that, like, the end result of that, basically. Like, some of the um, best off-road trucks in the game, you can feel like some slight limiters to them. Whereas this feels like it's just limited by what it is. But it's actually a very good, strong, powerful truck that's been well upgraded. And... I'm trying to think of the way to explain it, it's like, obviously this game's a hell of a lot of fun. When you get a truck, like, we build trucks to dominate the landscape, I don't want to limp by and just tiptoe over the landscape, it's more like I want to eat it for breakfast, and I'm happy with a lot of trucks that are balanced and all the rest of it, and uh, they're not necessarily the best through stuff, I've got no problem with that, I, that's part of the reason I enjoy this game, but yeah, every now and then you do just want to kind of stick it in high gear with a nice fat juicy powerful engine and <laughs> go flying over a lot of stuff and this thing does that pretty well whilst not feeling not only not feeling overpowered I don't believe it is um, since now I've owned basically every truck in the game drove them all for hours and hours there is trucks that can perform particularly in the rough stuff better than this but it just ploughs along very nicely um, obviously sent in a horse of a vehicle one other thing I do like about this, it's got winch points on either side of the actual roof. So as you see now, when I flipped it with the loaf. And um, that loaf's only got muds on as well, and I was on ice and stuff. So it did pretty well, but having that uh, winch point 
yeah, on the top of the roofs. Not many trucks have that. It'd be nice if there was more that had it, but this is definitely an advantage. And uh, yeah, I believe it was in just a minute ago where uh, I went through the ice, had the loaf pushing behind me. Again, tandem vehicles helps, but then now while I was there, I was like, sod it. <laughs> Stick the loaf on the back. This is another reason why I do like this truck, though. It does fit in a loaf very nicely on the back. It holds it on just fine with a winch. Um, it's got the twin exhaust, so like the nose of the loaf just tends to sit between uh, those exhausts. I did have the spare tyre on at the minute. I ended up taking that off because with the roof rack on the loaf, I've got four spare tyres anyway. And as you can see, it just makes the loaf sit back a bit more. And then both sets of loaf tyres were sitting on the wheels. If you, I will do later, like when I remove that uh, spare wheel, the loaf sits a bit more forward and it doesn't really interrupt your wheels as much. But yeah, having a loaf on the back seems to like sit the... It's very good for like sitting the back down and gripping out anyway, but the loaf certainly... I wouldn't say it negatively affected it. If anything, it was positive. Maybe nothing, but... Yeah, I mean, look at it. <laughs> I just enjoy driving this thing. Flies over those pipes. Motors through the tree. Even got this far in high, which is uh, pretty decent. I hit that trollish branch, though, that just... It'll stop everything, so... I wasn't surprised or disappointed about that, but just got it out of high, um, yeah, got it out of high range, put it back in auto, and I was away. And this was actually a very nice truck um, with the off-road gearbox. As I said, now most the majority of my videos, I have the high range gearbox, just because I suppose one of the way, one of the ways we measure trucks in this game, how good they are, really is how quick they can go through terrain. Like that is basically the difference between the Tiger and a highway truck going through mud, one's incredibly slow if it makes it at all, one is very capable and yeah so I do usually prefer the high range in all sorts, I particularly would recommend it in this because it's got such a nice light it just whooshes up to speed when you put it in high, you can be going pretty slow, you can have a pretty heavy load like towing behind you and uh, yeah if you drop it in high as long as you're not like going up some muddy hill or something where it's gonna struggle to dig in and set off then uh, yeah it just motors up to speed very well and it was quite nice I suppose when I first had the game and uh, I hadn't explored all the maps and everything it was just quite fun like motoring your way through discovering everything like I didn't always want to just be sat there at two miles an hour and have <laughs> the full snow run experience sometimes I just wanted to yeah eat the miles up travel to the other side of the map, find some upgrades, some watchtowers, whatever. And uh, I think this thing did did me pretty well all the way through the uh, game, really. That's one of the reasons I'd like to start the game again. But I don't want to get rid of all my trucks. Like, if I was just to start a new game now, I can't be arsed earning another three million doing contests and whatever, so... And I also like all the trucks I've got. I don't really want to <laughs> start a different game. So hopefully they do offer a chance to reset all the missions soon. And um, I already kind of set my benchmark of how well I did in the missions with this thing. And I've restaged some things since, like the Derry Longhorn Rescue, the White Western Star. And I used this for my, like, real actual attempt. When I restaged them, I obviously used a mixture of things. And, uh, yeah, that's how I kind of know that this isn't OP. It's not, like, ridiculous. It's not broken or anything like that. It's just, it is pretty good. I've considering they do charge money for it, I believe it had to be in the decently good range. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want it to like undermine all the other vehicles, which it doesn't, but if it was crap, it's like, you know, what's the point in selling it? But yeah, I don't feel disappointed uh, with my purchase. It actually does very well, as you can see, over snow. That was one reason I uh, really like this. I wasn't sure when I heard they were obviously doing SnowRunner and adding snow. I wasn't say I was like, not anti it at all, but it was kind of like, well, I hope it kind of goes well, because the original game was MudRunner, it was more to do with mud and everything, and it's like, I hope it's not just a shit cheap attempt at snow to make something different, but I don't believe it is. I think they've actually done a really nice job of all the terrains, really, if I'm honest. Or mostly, I'd say the ice at the minute can be a little bit glitchy and stuff, but generally speaking, yeah, it all sort of went really well and I enjoyed this thing. I really like the snow, snowy maps. I like flying around them a fair amount in this. 
and even there I was just going obviously uh, heading towards the quarry cutting through that mud I brought this the other day I can't remember what vehicle I was reviewing possibly the CK and you might have just seen this in the background and yeah I was having a good old time flying around the quarry and this <laughs> this and the loaf the other day and one thing for sure is this thing does use a lot of fuel like you'll see on the um, litres per minute it can go above 30 I've seen it about 33 34 I believe but because it does eat the terrain up very well you get a lot of use out of that fuel like I kind of and not all the time sometimes I want to you know jump in a club something like that that's really slow or yeah you know got the advanced special and whatever other times I'd rather go flying even if it means I'm using more fuel even if it means I need to do a little detour in 15 minutes and just spin by a um, fuel station yeah I just want that I mean even up here like I just stuck it in high gear and I admit that was close kind of thing like it's not unstallable or anything but yeah I was already going up the hill I wasn't I didn't have loads of speed it probably wouldn't have done that if I was towing a trailer but I don't think a lot would anyway if I'm honest you see driving along a road like god damn it this is why this is why you have to bring yourself a loaf so why didn't I just accept the inevitable in the first place and set off with a loaf but again because it's got the winch point on the top of the roof it's just a lot easier to hinge it over I'm now like the distance between the top of the roof and the wheels I was trying to kind of seesaw up over like the distance is more so it's kind of got more, I don't know, momentum or whatever. <laughs> I remember something to do with that at school. They told me I'd need it one day, but I'm still waiting. And uh, yeah, while I was here, again, there was another thing I do like about the Navistar. It is pretty easy to just hop the loaf on the back. I mean, of course, loaf is a goddamn professional, so it does make things pretty easy. I believe I've removed the spare tyre by now so now I've got it like hoovered in with a winch. Oh no I've not yet. <laughs> oh well scrap that for now then. See how the two loaf wheels though are sitting on both truck wheels? I believe particularly because it's all four wheels it's taken me a little bit longer to get into high gear but it wasn't a lot longer and once I'm in high gear it just ticks along anyway. <laughs> One thing as well I will say is a it is a negative with this, I'll agree, but I just find it quite funny that the amount of smoke that pours out of it blocks your view sometimes, but again, it's I kind of find it more funny than annoying. A lot of the time, particularly when I was playing the game and I was trying to like not roll and just mess around, I, I usually have the camera on this angle anyway because I did this a hell of a lot in Mudrunner. I like to see the actual front wheels and where they're steering and what they're doing and how they're reacting, so... I quite often drive with a camera on an angle, but I'm not going to lie, if it had, if they added an option for like an exhaust that just goes say under the middle of the truck, or at least probably points out sideways more to kind of break the two banks of smoke apart, yeah, it, I would choose it, but I still, it honestly doesn't bother me for whatever reason, I'm not trying to defend the truck, but it just doesn't. <laughs> See, I believe now I've got the uh, spare tyre off, so the loaf is more tucked in, in between the uh, exhaust stacks. Only the loaf rear wheels are touching the uh, Navistar's rear wheels, but as you can see it's not really affecting anything because there's only one set of wheels. And yeah, again, motors along very nicely. Of course, fitting a loaf on the back, um, I've got a roof rack, got repairs, spare tyres, extra fuel, I've got a spare winch. I could put an autonomous or a uh, advanced on, but I, I'll be honest, I'm not sure with this. Like, I've got yeah, 12 loaves. There's probably about eight of them, seven or eight that have got the advanced, <laughs> four or five that have got the autonomous. But I didn't actually use the loaf with the Navistar really on my playthrough because I hadn't found the loaf yet, I hadn't discovered the uh, magic of the loaf, didn't realise it was such a professional and a goddamn horse with a vehicle. So I had to uh, rough it out with just the Navistar. But yeah, since then I have a had a good old lap of the maps with it tonight to be honest even cutting the footage down it's um yeah there was a hell of a lot more footage than this because I was just having a good old time flying around and there you see got a loaf on me originally <laughs> I tried this the other day and it did work but it was 
a little bit long and drawn out. Driving into the back of the Navistar, it was kind of nudging it forward a bit and slowly breaking the ice in front. But in the end, jumped off the side, clawed its way out the ice, which is pretty good as well. It's got a roof rack on at the minute. And uh, for what it's worth, though, the Navistar is actually pretty decent at getting through the ice. Even recently, when I felt it's a little bit more trollish, if anything, it's mostly there'll just be one bit of ice that kind of grips onto the bumper of the Navistar. But, yeah, tonight, I'd say 70-80% of the time, I made it through the ice. But, that's why I take a horse, and then it's 100% of the time, because... Just send your little emergency deployment loaf out. And then you keep going. So anyway, this is another thing I really do like about this truck though. It's very good at hauling stuff and it's just like a pretty hassle-free hauler, even when it's pretty heavy stuff really. And as well, I've not really used this trailer before. I loaded this trailer, I don't know, the other day when I was just messing around. Uh, yeah, I actually do quite like it, even though it's probably not the most suitable trailer if you're going down some little windy road. But it's got five slots on it. Uh, I've put two lots of metal beams on and then there's some single cargo at the back. But there's also room still over like the uh, fifth wheel and everything. Which I'm pretty damn sure I could fit a loaf on there. <laughs> what am I talking? Of course I can. Probably fit about fucking seven on there. In fact, sit them all across the top of the trailer. But anyway, <laughs> we'll save that for another video. Yeah, I just like how well this thing pulls stuff. The turning circle on this isn't the best. I mean, I just made it around there by kind of just driving into the wall and bouncing it around. But the occasional three-point turn, I can live with, all things considered. Once you get used to it, you sort of line your corners up a bit better and you can mostly avoid that anyway. But I would say the steering isn't, like... It's responsive and everything, which I do like about it, because when you're just hammering through, like, rough terrain, but you're kind of roughly going in a straight line, you can still weave around rocks and all sorts. But yeah, it just it's not got the deepest steering angle, so... Overall, it's, uh... Once you start steering, you just... It is what it is, and you've got to wait for it to uh, start turning. But yeah, I did some special objective trailers with this, and it did pretty well considering. I mean, I'm sure a Colob and the P16 did do better and stuff, but they are pretty massive and purpose-built for that sort of thing in this game anyway. Um, yeah, another reason I like it. Flying down the runway, launching it off here. Like, another thing I do like about this truck, as far as, say, balancing goes, it's got very nice power in high range. I didn't hit that Don, by the way. We'll, we'll see why in a sec. But it's not geared to where it's, like, very fast, but it's got very nice torque to it. Um, yeah. I mean, this was, I suppose, a little reason why this was originally considered in the top ten. Um, and then I kind of changed my mind because it rolled a lot, but the ANK flew off there a lot faster, like the ANK has a higher top speed. This thing, as you can see, didn't get as close as the ANK, which also hit my goddamn aviation Don 71 out of the sky, so now I'm going to have to put that back up there again. Um, that's what she said. Yeah. It doesn't go as, like, top speed, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's like, how nicely it motors up to speed is what I like about it, and again, even if you're hauling stuff, even now, I was just leaning enough to where I could start the engine, so winch to the ANK, it flipped me first, and then I flipped the ANK, and as you can see, it's just a good hauler. As soon as I was on my wheels, I mean, that ANK is now following me, it doesn't have that much choice in the matter, it's uh, sort of pulls stuff here, there and everywhere, wherever you need to go. And uh, this now is a bit more moting around on Smithville Dam at the minute. If you're... If you settle from the garage, go like past the farm, down over the uh, dam, and then you kind of cut across past the quarry, and you'd be on your way to Island Lake. There's kind of this swampy bit at the bottom of the map. And uh, I've been through here in a hell of a lot of trucks, and with varying degrees of success, and this one I'd say is up there as one of the kind of better ones, where, as you can see, it is using a lot of fuel, but... It's making a lot of use of that fuel. And even now, I didn't fill this up or anything. I just set off from the garage. So I'm basically on the, on the other side of the Smithville Dam map. I'm near the Island Lake um, gateway. And you can see from the fuel, there's like a, not even a third, somewhere around a quarter-ish of my fuel used. So really, I could probably drive back to the garage, back here, and maybe even make it back to the garage. So... 
yeah, fuel usage is quick, but the amount of distance you can eat up is pretty quick as well, which, as I said, often I quite like that overall. Not always, though. It's definitely one of those games where you can be having the time of your life going one mile an hour, <laughs> stuck in a ditch, but... Yeah, a lot of the time I, uh, like I say, I like a truck that makes you feel like you're eating up the terrain. It's not, it's not beating you. You're, uh, you're beating it. <laughs> I won't even go there. Um, another thing, I just smashed my suspension. It travels pretty damn nicely, even with broken suspension. But again, it just hauls along nicely. It's in the high gear. There's no hassle. I know this isn't a particularly heavy trailer, but point being, it's just a nice speed. At this speed in the high range, the uh, steering does suit it pretty nicely. It's just when you got them tight, wiggly roads that are changing direction a lot, it can, uh, yeah. If you're not used to it, you can steer a bit late and it can ca could catch you out. Looks pretty nice when it's lowered as well, if I'm honest. <laughs> Ain't quite got the money yet to have a lowered Navistar, but we'll keep working on it. So, yeah, I actually brought a trailer back. I left that trailer there about two months ago. So one day. It would be nice if I could just recover trailers though. Nice little screenshot there. And then yeah, just for out for one little drive again. This time I used a crane just to scoot the uh, nose of the loaf up, but I reckon I could do that thing with the tyres and attach a wind and all that. I just couldn't be bothered. It was like, I'm right at the garage. It took me 10-15 seconds to get Bruce out. And we're off again. Comical levels of smoke. Loaf vanished. Stealth loaf. But yeah, once you take them off roading together, see what I said about there's a dodgy bump that's like invisible there until you hit it. I nearly rolled, but fortunately, the Navistar is loaf trained. And yeah, the loaf sits between them exhaust stacks. It ain't going anywhere. It can't make the winch long enough to kind of bump out either side, which basically just means it's hassle free. It stays there. I can drive along doing my thing. And uh, I've got more fuel and repair points and, yeah, spare winches. I mean, I'll, there's already been a few times tonight you've seen where I've either rolled or got stuck in the ice and uh, having a goddamn horse or vehicle with you has helped the situation. And this thing has got quite nice base weight, so it doesn't usually roll. I was a bit crap and late with steering out of it then. I kind of went to leave it and at the last second I was like, well, I'll try and steer out. I've got no diff locks, so it's not lighting up all the wheels and digging its way through the mud. Which, fortunately for me though, got a goddamn horse of a vehicle. And behold the magic of the loaf. These two, these make a very good pair. I'll say that much for it. I mean, look at him, goddamn professional. That's why you get yourself a loaf. That's some serious shit. Oh yeah, and an upstart. That's good as well. <laughs> <laughs> 